I don't often log on to Facebook, but when I do, I typically have sparks of thought that lead to lessons like this. The other day I saw a post it says people claim they know God but they deny him by the way they live. And it makes reference to Titus chapter 1 verse 16. And that verse reads they profess that they know God but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate I think this verse unfortunately describes most of the world today and even worse certain members of the church how many people that you know of profess to know God they claim God is the creator of all things they might say things, well, I have a personal relationship with my Savior, or so on and so forth. Well, typically, these types of individuals try to make God into like an ID card. They show this card whenever they get in trouble. Well, I believe in God. I'm okay. <clears throat> now, all of a sudden, they have their ticket punched. They're acceptable. But then they go right along living out just like the rest of this verse states. It's a card that some people use in times of distress, times of excuse, times of adversity. But when you get down to the daily living of things, in works, they deny him. We see from James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26, the importance of works in the Christian's faith. It there says that by works, we are able to show our faith to the world around us. And comparing that against folks that say they do no works or have no good works, and they're, they're going to have some great faith showing. But it later draws the conclusion that Faith without works is dead, just like the body without the spirit is dead. So good works are a part of legitimately professing God. But by our works, we also can deny Him, and many unfortunately do. And it gives a description of them being abominable. Just how things go whenever somebody says abominable sometimes the abominable snowman comes to mind and what a great horror that character is he's supposed to be some scary monster sometimes that term has been applied to me because I'm freakishly large however when used in scripture abominable or abomination points to just how disgusting how evil how wicked how loathsome something is to God. And this is what is describing the person that denies God by their works, but might profess Him by their words. It goes on, says disobedient. I think we have an idea of what disobedience is. We ask or tell someone to do something, and they don't do it. Or we forbid that same person from doing something, and they do it anyway. You see, there's a lot with children. And unfortunately, we have a lot of children that just aged and never grew up. And now they're adults, and they're just as disobedient as they were as, as little kids. And these people are contributing members of society. They're trying to function in this world, thinking that everything should be handed to them, including salvation. And they do nothing that is required by our Lord to obtain and maintain it. They have no thought or care for the authority that are found in the scriptures. And by their works, they obviously do not believe in God. 
I had heard the term that would fitly describe these folks, and that's practical atheism. That's an individual that might loudly profess the existence of God, might even profess Him to be the creator of all things, yet, by their works, they're an atheist. They go about living as if there is no God. And that very accurately describes, you look at this country. Most people in it are in that group. And as the church continues to exist in this world, we are always susceptible to that type of mentality, to that type of behavior. And in the last phrase of this verse, and unto every good work reprobate or disqualified, You see, anyone can do a good work. But that does not mean that they are properly qualified to be rewarded for a good work such as that. We see this picture in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. The judgment scene there is painted by Christ. And certain had come to him and, well, Lord, we did all these great things in your name. Jesus doesn't argue with them. I believe that they did those good works. But he answered and said, I never knew you. You see, those individuals might be doing good works, but they were never qualified. They had never become Christians. They were never authorized to do those good works. So they accounted nothing for those individuals. If I showed up to somebody else's work one day, let's say I'll show up to Andrew's work site. He likes bossing people around. He gets paid to do that. Good for him. And I show up and let's say I help out with pouring a, a form of concrete. Am I subject to getting paid that day? No. Andrew just got free labor. I wasn't qualified to earn a paycheck even though I did the work. Well, again, that's the type of thing that's pictured there in Matthew 7. Under every good work, disqualified. These things describe those who profess that they know God, but by their works outright deny Him. This type of individual is really also pictured... In Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 through 6, it says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, that would be the Christian, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, which would be salvation, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify themselves, the Son of God, afresh, and put him to an open shame. You see, the individual that is described in Titus 1, verse 16, they put the Son of God freshly crucified by their deeds, by their words, by who they support, by who they don't support. All the while, they might even say, we believe in God. They might even use the label Christian. I'm a Christian, and they go right after 5 o'clock after work and go to the bar. Might even be before that, they start using all manner of foul language. We talked about that last week in our sermons. That type of thing is, is typically accepted in the secular world, but it should not be found within the Lord's church. It's not prescribed by the Lord's people or by God for His people. Yet all too often, as was once said, though we're pilgrims, some of our brethren have indeed fallen in love with the campground. And this campground is just going to be burned up when this life in the flesh is over. When God calls it all to an end, Everything that many people hold dear in this life, above heavenly things, is going to be burned up. The very elements will be melting with fervent heat. May it never be said of any mind, anyone in the church what we've talked about today. 
disqualified from properly doing good works, abominable, disobedient. These are terrible phrases to be considered or terrible labels to be giving a child of God. Yet it's possible. We hear it quite often that most of the New Testament was written to Christians to keep us clean, to make us want to be different from the world. Because this is how the world measures its own. These types of things are glorious to it, but not so for the Christian. So if you this afternoon are guilty of any of these things mentioned or any other thing, any other sin, why not be restored as a faithful member of the church through repentance and prayer, confession of fault, or if you're not a Christian at this time, why not become one? Put on the Lord in baptism. Render obedience to the gospel of Christ. If either of these apply to you, make it known as now together we stand and sing.